Here's a, category, a list. This is a good list. This is a very good list to think about. Here are some of the voluntary actions that people undertake in order to ensure that the unconscious, both as a repository of instinctual motivation and as a repository of memory, becomes as pathological as possible. And so, one way of thinking about the Freudian unconscious, apart from the id element, which is the instinct part, this is more to do with the memory element, is, well, when people engage in something that's pathological, are they conscious of it? And the Freudians would say, well, generally not. But that doesn't mean they weren't conscious of it when they first did it. It's like the decision, it's like the decision to lie is conscious. You may forget that you did it and only be moving forward through time the consequences of having engaged in it. And the fact that you've made it habitual and that there are consequences may be something you forget and that becomes unconscious, but it doesn't mean you didn't know what you were doing when you first did it. And so here are some of the little nasty tricks that people play on each other and on themselves in order to ensure that they don't accurately represent the nature of their experience. And you might ask yourself, what does accurate representation mean given that there's no way you can ever have a coherent and complete representation of anything that ever happens to you? And so one rule of thumb for that is that, well, you've accurately represented something that's happened to you that was negative in the past if you've represented it such that you're not going to do it again in the future. Because the purpose of memory, in large part, is to stop you from doing the same stupid things that you've already done again in the future. It's not purely representational, right? It's adaptive. And so if you're twisting and distorting your memories so that they're more acceptable to you from a conceptual level, but not developing in this direction that would allow you to become increasingly adapted, well then, you're engaging, you're likely engaging in one or more of these processes. Repression. Well, repression is that you just don't admit it. I think mostly what happens when people repress is not so much that they actively repress. It's not exactly that they do something and they remember it and then they push it down. It's that they do something and there are some consequences and the consequences are complex and maybe they're motivated and then they just don't think about it anymore. Because it's easy not to think about something. You just don't think about it. It's easy. So in some sense, although this isn't a precisely Freudian idea, the default position is repression. You know, because most of the things that you do are complex and they require articulation in order to understand. You can just avoid engaging in that. And then the nasty little situation will remain sort of emotionally valent and attempting to pop up in your memory structure. Those are the sorts of things that maybe you remember that happened more than 18 months ago that still cause an emotional response when you bring them to mind. That's a good clue, that there's something there that you have not articulated. Sometimes it's because you don't want to, and sometimes it's just because you can't. You know, you just, you don't know how to make sense out of the occurrence. You know, maybe you were bullied a lot when you were 13, it still bothers you when you think about it, but you still haven't been able to figure out exactly why. 